What's going on guys? So my garage is a little crowded today. Um, IS300, FJ Cruiser, this junk engine, and then T56 transmissions on the floor, which I'm going to be pulling apart today. But uh, yeah, all this stuff's in the way. So I pretty much had to put the transmission on the floor because I'm redoing the wiring right now in the IS300. So this current video that I'm doing right now will be the video that comes up after I finish the, the wiring and everything. But I just gotta get this out of the way. So I have the, all the wires laid out on the back of the car that are going to be used in relocating the ECU from the engine bay into the interior. Let's get it out of the engine bay and also prep the car for engine management because I don't want the engine management in the engine bay. Anyway, the transmission. So there's a guy from Hungary that contacted me and he said he has a LS1 um, T56 that he wants to trade parts for my LT1 T56. Um, I, it almost kind of sounds like a scam, mainly because he's in Hungary and he's asking for my transmission parts in exchange for his transmission parts. But hopefully it's not a scam. Worst case scenario, I end up mailing off parts and I lose out on the parts that I'm not going to use anyway. I was just going to put them up on eBay and get five, six, seven hundred dollars for all of them, which is about what these parts cost from him anyway. So I'm trusting that he's sending me the right parts. But anyway, going through and taking this transmission apart. So. I've already cleaned the surface area of the front plate or the front end plate or whatever you want to call it, mid plate, depending on you know, this came loose too. This is the RTV sealant. So you'll need RTV sealant to go between. If you're breaking this apart and you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, and you're, you're converting your LT1 transmission to an LS1 style uh, so that it bolts onto the LS engines. It's a good way to still use these transmissions if you don't have an LT1. Since I'm putting a different input shaft in from another um, vehicle, my input shaft is not coming with a uh, replacement bearing, the bearing that goes around the, the input shaft. So I'm, I'll be ordering a new bearing and I'll be ordering the shims so that um, I don't really have the equipment to shim up the transmission, but I'm gonna see if I could try to do it. There are videos on how to do that if you care to do that. Um, this mid plate has to come off and in order for the mid plate to come off, the bell housing has to come off. So I've already loosened the bottom bolts. There's four bottom bolts on the bell housing. They're like down on the bottom side, like down here. And then there's two like underneath, kind of like not up here, but on the exact opposite side from, from this. So those two are down there. And once those are out, you can remove the, um, all these bolts from the inside. So I'm gonna get to work doing that and I'm gonna set up the camera and just time lapse this. It's easy though. You're just really taking out bell housing bolts and then taking out the bolts on the inside of the bell housing that go in and hold on the front plate or mid plate or end plate or whatever you want to call it. There may still be a uh, gear lube in this. <laughs> I'll find out whenever I get it open. So um, I'm going to put something under it to kind of catch it. I, that's why I have it on these two by fours just to elevate it a little bit so I can slide a, uh, I can slide something underneath this. After the bell housing is all out, I'll have a little more room, but I could put like a little tray underneath to catch the gear lube as it comes out, if there is any gear lube that comes out. But while I'm waiting on the other transmission parts, this is just going to really be sitting on the floor. So I have some um, industrial wrap that I'm going to wrap the front of the engine just to keep it safe and keep dust and everything out of it. Because it's windy here, so when I open the garage, there is dust that blows in and I don't want that in the transmission. So I'm gonna protect it from the elements the best that I can. I'm gonna set up the camera and just start time-lapsing some stuff. Eleven? Looks like there's eleven of them. So all these are the same size, same thread pitch, everything is the ones that go into the bell housing. And uh, I'm gonna tap this a little bit and knock it off. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have done that. I should have got the bolts out of the way. Well, on the bright side, while my bolts are sitting around, they won't get rusty.
So this is like that. I have made a mess. Oh, gear lube is escaping my plastic lid. That is not good. This is the input shaft, input spline, whatever you want to call it. These bearings have to be pressed on, so uh, removing these, I don't know, I'm not gonna bother with removing these from this shaft. If the guy that gets this wants to remove these, then that's, that's on him. But uh, I am going to definitely remove the bearings on my um, input shaft whenever that comes in from the, from the guy that's selling me, the, that's trading me the S1, LS1 parts. And I'll have to get those pressed onto this. So I'm gonna put a video down in the description of the guys that, uh, other guys that pull this apart. Because they shim theirs and do everything they're supposed to do. I'm not a transmission shop. I've never worked at a transmission shop, just a regular auto shop. All right, I wrapped this up, but I'm pretty sure that <laughs> in my haste uh, in trying to clean up my mess that I made in my garage, I didn't want gear lube to get on the tires of the, the IS because it's going to be sitting there for probably another uh, few days and I, didn't want, I just didn't want gear lube to get on it. Hey, I think I left the synchro on this for fourth gear. That's what their fourth gear synchro looks like on pictures that I pulled up on eBay. This is the only thing that I had to remove. So I'm going to wrap this up really well. I don't want anything to get on this. And it's obviously not going to stay in the transmission, plus I've already wrapped up the front of the transmission, so I don't get any dust and stuff in that. Looks like there's slots, there's sides on the teeth. I've gotta look that up. Um, there's like a two hour rebuild video on this transmission that I'm gonna have to watch to figure out if this is uh, how this is supposed to go back in. This synchro is going back on the, the new shaft whenever that comes in, so. Looks like there's a taper on the inside, so it's easy to know the direction that it goes on. So, easy peasy. All right, my parts came in the mail. It turns out it wasn't a scam. So I have my input shaft and the front plate. These are both from a T56 from a 98 Camaro LS1. And that's what I need in order to mount it to this bell housing. So the bell housing came in. This is from Granis Racing. This is crazy thick. I didn't want to get the steel one because of how it resonates. It's supposed to be more of a noisy bell housing because the aluminum, the cast aluminum ends up insulating really well. And the Granis bell housing came with not only the bolts to bolt it into the front plate, but also the bolts to bolt it into my 2JZ. So I am still working on the floor because there's stuff on both of my workbenches. I had my input shaft bearing replaced. I didn't know the condition of the input shaft when I got it. So I figured I would replace the bearing anyway. The outer race is this one. Slides out really easily. But before I put this outer race in, before I put the new outer race in, I have my new razor blade. I'm just using that to go around here and clean this. And then I uh, just wipe it all off with the brake clean whenever I'm done. Okay, both surface areas are clean. I've got all the junk off of them. Just wanna make sure I keep all these little specks and stuff that keep showing up. Keep all that stuff off of them. This goes in here and there's little notches to where it only goes one direction. So the shims sit under here. This is my old uh, input shaft outer race for the other bearing. This is the new one. my hands don't have any like junk on them and it kind of came with a little lubrication on it so I'm going to slide this in carefully straight I don't want to turn this to the side either way because it could get stuck so I will be taking this input shaft outer race out again because I will be reshimming this but this is clean it's got the new input shaft main bearing on it. And I could do this without dropping anything. Fits well. Now, one thing I noticed with putting this on and lining this up, uh, this little rod, whatever, guide rod, I'm not sure what this is, but this, um, these two rods here, it's kind of hard to line them up so 
what I've been doing is I've been looking down inside this crack to make sure that both of them are lined up. So I'll line up one and then I'll line up the other one. That's one. And I'll remove this. The other one's lined up. And that's it. And it's put on. So now all I have to do is re-shim this, but basically I would torque this down to spec after this point, whenever I put this back on, I'm just going to go through over and over again, torquing this down, getting it torqued to spec, checking to see if the input shaft moves, taking it off, shimming it again, putting it back on, torquing it to spec, checking to see if the input shaft moves, and then waiting until the input shaft, when I put that shim on, that locks this input shaft in place. Then I can take this off, take out four thousandths of an inch worth of input shaft shims, and put it back together, torque it to spec, and then I'm done. The transmission fluid that this takes is actually not gear lube. This takes ATF3. I wanna look up the best fluid to put in this based off of the people that use these and drag race these or whatever. But I know it is ATF3. So that's strange to put automatic transmission fluid in to a manual transmission. But from what I understand, it helps with the synchros because whenever you're shifting, the gear doesn't have to push out that heavy 80 weight, 90 weight fluid. It is just pushing out the automatic transmission fluid, which is considerably thinner than uh, than gear lube. So that's that. So I'm going to put this back together while I look for a shim kit for this. I'm gonna bolt this all back up, put the bell housing on, and then just pretty much stand this up in a corner while I'm, um, while I'm looking for that. But the other thing that I ordered, which I'm still waiting on that to come in the mail, so whenever I took this Hearst shifter off, there's a cup that's down here. I forget what this is called, but I'll have it. I'll have the name of it. But this is, it's all like, it's squished. It's got a huge crack right there, just where it's, this has definitely seen some abuse, like you know, 20 years worth of abuse, and it's a little plastic cup. So I ordered a brass one of this from Tick Performance. So they, they make these little brass cups that go in here. They also, they make a few brass parts for the inside of this to replace some of the plastic components. And this is the easiest one to change out right now. Since I broke this seal, I'm going to have to seal it back, obviously. So uh, yeah, well, whenever this comes in, that cup's gonna go in there and it's gonna replace this one. It's super easy to, to change. So I'm just waiting on that to come in the mail and then I can seal this back together. So what I don't want to happen is have a, a worn out little shift cup but right there. I mean, that thing is so easy to change out. I, I don't want to miss a gear or have trouble putting it into gear because I have a, a sloppy shifter. That would at least give me a little bit more of a stable shift. Little stuff like that that's easy, easy things to fix is what I'm fixing on this transmission for now. I do want to do a full rebuild on it later, but that will be farther in the future. All right, now it's time to put the bell housing on. Cast bell trans to bell hardware, 40 foot pounds. Oh, these say foot pounds. Nice, that's good. So this is 40 foot pounds. This is bell to block, so I don't need these just yet. It's interesting that he only has one dowel. Oh, this transmission is supposed to have two dowels. I'm missing a dowel. Okay, that's good to know. That'd be far easier. So I've got to get another dowel pin for this. I didn't even notice that. It's a good thing I'm mock fitting it. So now I know what to order. I really like that these bolts in from the back. That gives you the option of uh, using the transmission on your transmission jack to line up your clutch and everything. And then pull the transmission out and then put your bell housing in. That's it, I have two of these bolted on. Uh, if you don't know, this transmission, this is the other transmission, it had the release fork type set up with the regular throw out bearing. This uses this type of setup. I've gotta order another one of these, but 
This is an internal throwout bearing. I don't like this style, the internal slave cylinder and throwout bearing in one. For now, I'm going to finish bolting this up, but the things that I need for the rest of this transmission in order to go into the IS300 is I need the cross member that supports this transmission. I need the drive shaft. Obviously, I, I need one of these. This transmission has a reverse lockout solenoid that keeps you from going into reverse whenever the, whenever the transmission is moving, pretty much, so that you're not putting it in reverse instead of, uh, what is it, sixth is the side reverse? Fifth? Fifth is the side reverse. So it's got that reverse lockout solenoid and I'm going to be using my Haltech to, uh, to trigger that so that it enables the reverse lockout solenoid whenever the transmission's moving. And then I pretty much have to get a clutch for this and then I'm good. And now I can get the transmission out of the way in my garage floor. I can stand it back up on the bell housing like I had it before. I just, I just had boards on the bottom of this so that it wasn't sitting straight on the input shaft. But that's it. So thanks a lot for watching this. Uh, that's all I'm going to do on this transmission. I'm not, I'm not going to make any more videos on it until I'm actually putting it in. I might do a rebuild video on it in the future just to show what I'm doing, but there's very detailed rebuild videos on this specific transmission. So I, have, I do plan to take it apart and replace the, the synchro blockers. There are carbon ones that are made to replace these and then replace some of the, um, the fork pads on the inside. I think there's three sets, three or four sets of fork pads that are inside this transmission that are brass ones that are made to replace the plastic one. So it's replacing more plastic pieces that came factory on this with uh, the brass pieces. But still have to seal it up, still have to put the, the shims on it so that the input shaft is it's good. So it doesn't feel like it has a lot of play in it right now, now that everything's bolted up. So that's kind of nice. Hmm. That's good to know. But uh, anyway, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and as always, God bless you guys.